Hello and welcome back to another video. Today I will react to Geography No Poland. I hope you will all enjoy it. Um, it's a country to the east of my country. Um, and there is a lot of history between my country and Poland. I have a few things to say. Um, some things to criticize, but um, also some things to um, say what po Polish people should like. So. Um, I hope you um, will stick to the end. Um, if you are interested in mm, watching someone um, playing some video games, um, me watching playing some video games, then um, uh, go to Twitch. The um, link will be in the description. Maybe I even get this done that it appears on the screen where you can just click on it. I'm not sure how this functions. But um, otherwise, in the description is a link for my Twitch channel. Um, okay, you can also follow me on Twitter if you want. Um, Otherwise, ju also subscribe. Please subscribe to my channel. Please, please, please. Um, you would really help me out a lot. Um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed. Poland. Polska, Polska, Polska. I'm not sure. Um, the country in the native language. Um, I can't speak Polish. Polish, Polish. Um, I I heard I I had once um a person um at work or so um. But we spoke p Polish, um, but when when she s when she spoke um, Polish for the first time, I I, g I asked her, uh, "Do you speak Russian?" Now she did, she didn't, and she but she wasn't angry also. Um, she explained to me it is not similar, and there are similar languages. Um, anyway, so now let's start with this video. Um, without further ado, get let get let get into this. All right, we've reached Poland. Europe's, uh, how can I put this? Poland knows how to take a hit. It's like... Is that all you got? I'm not even breaking a sweat, f***ers. Yeah. Um, the history of Poland is very interesting. They got invaded a lot. It's time to learn geography now! By the way, this is my buddy Art. He's half Polish. Uh, Art, do you know anything about Poland? I know nothing about Poland, but I know my last name means on Friday. So anyway, I have another Polish friend named Conrad who's actually also going to be in this episode. He's Polish and he speaks Polish. Hey, f*** that guy. Well, uh, Art, you can also play Poland in the skits and stuff in this episode. Is that cool? Yeah, I guess so. All right, cool. Anyway, hey everybody, I'm your host, Barbs. Welcome to the Wolverine of Europe. The Poles know how to deal with calamity, and if there was ever a mutant... Uh, and, and there's something else, uh, which I want to mention right now, um, The Witcher 3 Right Hand, um, I mean, the books, the game based on, are also Polish, um, and... Yeah, I play. I also play maybe a bit to um, Witcher on um, YouTube. So, <laughs> apocalypse. You would. You can tell me which maybe folk and um, tales or um, legends or other things. Um, uh, maybe some things in the Witcher. Um, in the game also based on some things which you can find in Polish um, literature, in history and um, legends, folk tales. So let me know if you know something. Probably want one on your team. In any case, let's begin. How to piss off a Polish person one on one? Oh man, I just visited Poland. I sure loves that Eastern European country. It's Central, Central European. Yeah, they don't like being called East. Yeah, and th there is also one of the things uh, I have to say, which I don't like about Poland. You can write in the comments whatever you want. Um, how much um you. In this way, don't uh, like what I, I say, or don't think that I have any right to say it, but I will still say it. Mm. I, I don't like it, the, the how they... Um, I understand that uh, there were maybe issues between the Soviet Union and Poland in the history. Um, not, I mean, not in the invasions, I mean after the... Um, in the Eastern Bloc thing, you know? Um, I get that there are some uh, historic things which happened which were not great and so on. Um, so that I, I get this, don't, you don't need to say this, but um, I don't like it uh, how they um, know the, uh, Poland and the 
Estland, Lithuania and Latvia. Um, to treat Russian speaking people and um, and also Russia. I mean, you know with Ukraine, of course, uh, it's a shitty war and um, I understand this, it's, uh, this is messed up. But anyway, I will also say in the in later in the video something you should you hopefully would you agree with me about reportation payments. Eastern Europe, even though I mean, come on, they're kind of more on the eastern side of the continent, and it's okay, okay, Central, Central, Central European, Central. The country is located in Central Europe and bordered by. I mean, if you take it, uh, maybe it is even Central, if purely from a geographic, geographically. Um, a viewpoint because um, uh, until the U Ural mountain range, um, I mean from Poland, from the um, east border of Bo Poland to the Ural mountains, where there is, uh, I mean, you I think it's that's how um, people who study geography and so understand this. It's the continent of Europe, and it's with the Ural. Oh, it's difficult to pronounce. I'm sorry, Ural mountain range in the east of um, behind. Um, east of Moscow and so, so the distance from East Poland to there is maybe similar from West Poland to Ireland or so. so maybe it is central after all. So um, from a geographically um, a viewpoint, seven other countries. Keep in mind, this little guy right here is a detached exclave of Russia called Kaliningrad. Speaking of which, we already mentioned this in the Germany episode, but Poland shares an island called Uzedom or Uznam with Germany in this. This is also interesting. I would like to visit this island some, at some point. Um, and I like it always when, um, you know, for example, islands are shared between two countries, um, like technically also with Cyprus, um, if you consider Northern Cyprus to be a country. But um, well, it's the same for Uzedom or. Um, Sorry, um, I have a headset here and I hit the microphone accidentally. Um, so I like this kind of um, situations where um, countries share islands. So uh, maybe I'll visit it. Lagoon. The borders follow some natural boundaries like rivers and mountains. However, most of them were agreed upon after war. This is also interesting. I mean, uh, here's this uh, little peninsula in the north. Maybe you can tell me, um, uh, Polish um, guys, um, what this is, um, how it is called, and so. Is there, is there other cities on it? It looks nice. It's uh, surrounded by water. <laughs> Times. The country is divided into 16 voivodeships or provinces, the capital and largest city of the country, Warsaw, in the center. It also holds the busiest airport, Warsaw International. From there, the second largest city is Krakow, known as the medieval capital down south, and it holds. Krakow. Kharkov, uh, it's probably the German name. I, I'm not sure how to pronounce it in Polish. I'm really interested in other countries. So, um, I even if I say something which is maybe you think it is, uh, how can you say this? And so, I like other countries, um, nearly all of them, with um, some few exceptions. Um, I like nearly all of the countries, and under certain conditions, I would visit all of them. From North Korea to the United States, from Chile to um, Norway, to uh, New Zealand, Palau, Veneto, um, Democratic Republic of the Congo. So I would visit all of the countries in all con on all continents under certain conditions. And yeah, so um, I say sometimes things you maybe don't like, but it's just my opinion. And um, but culturally and um, linguistically, I'm interested in um, all of them, all of the countries. Holds the second largest airport, John Paul II Krakow International. And rounding out for third place is the city of Wuch, which means boat, nearly Wuch. in the center of the whole. Uh, I have seen this name before, as always heard, of course, lots, but it's just because, uh, you know, every time I see um, letters which looks a bit similar to um, um, German, I mean, with, with, um, also with Vietnamese, they have also letters which look similar, and then they have some uh, um, accents or other things, um, or like the L, li li like a line through the upper line, I mean, letters which look similar, not like Cyrillic, Arabic or so, so, um, these are, also Cyrillic has some letters which look similar, like the P, which is there, uh, um, R also, I think, but, um, um, Polish looks more similar. Country. Nonetheless, the city of Gdansk holds the third largest airport. Gdansk. Um, and by the way, I want maybe to um, 
visit in Poland at some point. Um, I had some plans which I maybe will um, also make at some <laughs> oh, um, follow. Um, which I will maybe also um, follow the plans <laughs> um, at some point. And therefore, I would also um, at some point like to learn Polish. Maybe I can learn Polish also and say a few things um, at some point. It definitely um, looks interesting, all the languages, and Polish also. International, and also the busiest shipping port located on the Baltic Sea, where much of the cargo comes into the country. Otherwise, their entire sea access is confined to the coastline. They do not own any distant islands in the Baltic. Due to the general flat landscape making much of the north and central parts, Poland is a bustling transport hub with numerous roadways that traverse every single corner into every neighboring nation. Since joining the EU, nearly 2 billion euros have been invested in Poland's rail lines, and high speed lines are being constructed today. Poland doesn't have any autonomous areas, but if we had to decide discuss historical and cultural regions, many people may just refer to this general area as Masuria, sometimes even historical Prussia. This general area is Pomerania. That's right, same as the dog, which is where it comes from. Um, Pomerania. It also reminds me on um, Mecklen Mecklenburg Vorpommern, this um, Bundesland here in Germany. And the coastal area is Kashubia, where the Kashubians are mostly found. There's Greater Poland, Lesser Poland, which at the very border has Ruthenia or Red Ruthenia. Parts of the south are considered Silesia, which are inhabited by peoples that have their own distinct culture apart from the Polish. It's all kind of confusing and we'll talk more about it later. One thing you have to understand is that historically, Poland had a lot of different types of administrative divisions and much of it was shaped by war. Sometimes they had more land, other times they had less, and for 123 years they kind of disappeared altogether. Here's Prussia! Russia! Oh, Austria! Well, actually, they almost completely disappeared. I mean, Krakow was technically a free city state for about 30 years. And keep in mind, we mentioned this in the Lithuania episode, but if you want to be incredibly technical, historically, the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth had some colonies. Way back yeehaw, when they thought one island in the Gambia, as well as Trinidad and Tobago, would be good overseas investments, making them the only sites that the Polish had colonized outside of Europe. Then what happened? In the end, it was too hard for them to manage, and they sold them off. The end. So anyway, here are some places of interest you guys, the Polish geography, suggested we mention this episode. This will be interesting. I um, will look forward for for things. As some I um, know, of course, I mean, I don't, I don't know any. Let's see what they will say. They have quite a few UNESCO heritage sites. A lot of them are like chapels. The Holy Mountain of Gabarka, the painted village of Zalipe, Chopin's heart, this rock city, the upside down house, Kosciuszko. Moment. Of Zalipe, Chopin's heart, this rock city, the upside. This <laughs> it is, um, uh, it's awesome. I like this. <laughs> I definitely would want to visit this um, upside down house. Upside down house, Kosciuszko Mound, the carrot house, the world's most narrow house. Tons of cool statues and monuments like these. The world's tallest Pope statue. Tons of World War II sites. It's kind of what they're known. Moment. Uh, I mean, they look um, uh, Soviet state statues, or maybe it's just because they look similar to some. This this woman in the um, up left um, corner um, looks like this one um, statue um, in Volgorod. Um, the Motherland's Call uh, statue. Mm, moment. Motherland it's called. It's that's right. I meant this the statue. I mean both have a sword, okay? And um that's that's the similarity I I, I meant. Let's continue with the video. Monuments like these, the world's tallest Pope statue, tons of World War II sites, it's kind of what they're known for, but the most famous one probably- Ah, uh, yeah. Um, that I think, I mean, maybe a good uh, situation to talk about, um, the, the one thing, uh, probably, oh, at least I think that most of the Polish people who watch this video would agree with me, um, on this, um, one thing I mentioned, definitive, they would pro hope, I think, agree. Um, I personally, Personally, I um, would um, 
I mean, I always read to, uh, often read about this that um, the Polish um, uh, president or um, foreign minister or people li like pe official people were asking Germany to um, repay um, reputations to, to because of the things the Germans or the Nazi Germans at the time um, uh, did in Poland. The um, terrible human r human rights um, crimes and um, the 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 millions of people they killed um civilian civilians and um, uh, maybe also referring to soldiers but mostly I think civilians and uh, infrastructure and infrastructure and damage they did to the country um and uh, the uh, for this um damage um or for this um um crimes um the Polish um, government often um asks or says that they want repayments reputations um I don't know exactly how how much it is um what they ask but I would personally um maybe the government would announce that they would um, uh, um raise the taxes um and i need to i would need to pay every month um at least one hundred two hundred whatsoever euro um extra and this money would go to Poland for reputations i would immediately want to do this. Um, maybe I also want to at some point when I, I have a bit more money um, pay back my own personal I mean when you when you would take all of the Germans, you know, um maybe even extract the people who are too young and um, just the people who can work and can earn money um, and divide the money they want from us through the um, amount of people who could work or could pay something um, to Poland. Um, I would maybe try to repay my own personal part to this and um, but I, w I would like to also I mean when the government would say this that they would raise the taxes l let's say 200 euro extra each month I would do it I would personally do it I don't like the Polish government I think it is part of conservative in some in some ways I think uh, wha wha how they um, recently I think destroyed or um, took down some um, Soviet statues and so I don't like this but that's the right the, the right is, I mean, a at first it's the right to do whatever they want in the country with um, uh, with um, statues, with um, monuments or so, but it's also the right to get this money. We, um, or, or I mean, uh, and I say we, I mean the Germans of this time and um, uh, we as a country which um, exists on, on, I mean, which is uh, like kind of a, I don't, I don't know the English word, but um, we are the rightful um, pressed predestator. Um, moment, moment. Uh, I'm I'm stupid. I, I just want to say this in a in a right way. Normally, I don't care so much if I say um, I have the right English words, or I just try to describe it in a way. But here, um, it's important. And not fr French. Um, successor. Um, we are the we are the Germany. The Federal Republic of Germany um, is a successor state of the Nazi Germany state from 1939 to 1945. So we have the obligations. Uh, um, we have to do this. We have to repay. Also to Greece, uh, there are also things we have never paid. We we just try to um, uh, make the con. Make it's this two plus four contract which was signed 1990 between the Soviet Union and uh, the Western countries like United States, um, Great Britain, and France, <laughs> and Germany, West and East Germany. I in this contract, they I think uh, try to um, uh, um, trick and um, try to trick. Um, it's a contract to be in a way that they are not any more responsible for the things the Nazis did and don't need to pay any money or so. Um, I think it's something the Germans did and some German politicians are very famous for doing it. But I think it's wrong, definitely wrong and I would um, pay money f um, and I see the um, obligation that we have to do this and I would like to pay extra taxes for this. So that said. Um, I still don't um, mm, agree with many things the Polish um, government does, or but that's also something else. I mean, mm, re recently also it kind of um, teaches students um, or children at schools to defend the country or something like this. I read. I don't know how true it is, but things like this I think it's just pervert and disgusting. But that's something else.
that this has nothing to do with our obligation to pay the money back. Anyway, let's continue this video. Probably being the Auschwitz concentration camp. Of course, there are way too many churches like these. This one was where all the former kings were coronated. And of course, there's Warsaw's St. John's Cathedral. There's a bunch of synagogues that actually survived World War II. And there's even a wooden mosque for the Tatar minority in Krushinyani. There's so many museums and galleries. Here's a bunch of notable ones. And too many castles, but they're very proud of having the world's largest medieval castle in Melbourne. Yeah, Poland does not fall short when it comes to sights to see, or things to do, or nature to explore. And that means we move on to the next segment. The it is said that the name Poland comes from Polani, which means people living in open fields. Poland is not all flat and not all plains. There's much more to it than you think. Poland is generally divided into five physical regions. The coast, the lake lands, the Polish plain, the Polish uplands, and the mountain regions. Much of Poland's coast along the Baltic Sea is straight until you hit the east and you get these interesting natural formations called spits. We've already talked about them in the Lithuania episode, but basically, spits are thin, narrow sandbanks Um, yeah, um, I'm sorry if I um, uh, said anything um, offensive to any Polish people. Um, as I said, I love um, all of the, the people who um, are just peaceful. And um, it just seems in the re recent months that, that um, nearly everyone in Europe is very um, kind of um, aggressive, kind of. And the the one uh, stupid Russia invades um, stupid Ukraine, and other countries are also aggressive through um, sanctions and so. So it's just everyone is suffering, um, and um, uh, through in different um, d um, ways and in different. Um, I have to uh, my English <laughs> different degrees. Um, uh, Ukrainians, of course, die, and um, Russians also die. At least the soldiers. Um, and uh, r Ukrainian civilians and Ukrainian soldiers, um, Russian civilians through the sanctions, we here because of high gas pr gas g prices for some things. Um, I mean, uh, when we I would sort them in who suffers the most, of course, Ukrainians would be probably up the list, but um, it's such a messy situation right now in Europe. So, um, but I'm honest. I'm honest to you. So, uh, if you have anything to do, um, what you want to say and complain about what I say or so, just tell me. Um, and uh, we can speak honestly about this. When you are not um, just um, negative and too aggressive, um, we can we can talk about everything. Um, and uh, I'm honest to you with my bias um, that I am most... Um, I would, uh, uh, people would say to me that I'm pro-Russian and pro, maybe even pro-Putin, which is stupid. That's because I want to end the war. They they say I'm pro Putin, that's that's weird. I don't get it. Um, but that's something else also. Um, you can go to my second channel. I uploaded there a few videos about um two videos I think about um Ukraine and what I think about uh, the stupid shitty war which is um taking place there. Uh, um, yeah. But now uh, uh, they explain even a bit about the peninsula. I was um, wondering what it is about. I also have to split the recording, so just a few more minutes and then I will stop the recording and later record more. I mean, I, I have already now um, 23 minutes recorded and the whole video is just 19 minutes long, so maybe the video will be over an hour long, but I hope you will still enjoy it and watch it. Let's continue a bit. ...that divide the sea from another body of water, creating saltwater lagoons, the largest one being the Bay of Puck, the Szczecin, and the Vistula Lagoon, shared with Russia's Kaliningrad exclave. Much of the country inland lies on the flat Polish plain, part of the greater North European plain, a huge open flat segment of Central Europe that ex... When Denmark would just be a bit, a little, a bit, a bit more north, or they would be build here a dam or anything in between to connect Denmark and Norway, it would be a gigantic, gigantic lake. So no, it's a gigantic bay. You could say it's a bay or an ocean. I mean, it's not an ocean; it's a Baltic Sea. But um, when they would make here a kind of a connection, land connection, somehow, or if there would be a land connection, it would be a gigantic, uh, impressive um, lake.
extends across multiple countries. Many people say that this is both the blessing and curse of Poland, because although a third of the country is forested, this one being the largest national park, and about a third is arable, making them a powerhouse contributor to Europe's agriculture sector, it did kind of make it easy for outside forces to enter and invade, with little or no natural obstacles barricading the interior of the country. Anyway, within this plain, many rivers like the Notek, the Warta, and the longest river, the Vistula, meander through the fertile valleys, passing through many important cities like Warsaw. In the north side, you have two massive lakes districts, the Pomeranian and the larger Masurian, which also holds the largest lake of the country, like Szniarwy. The further south you go, the higher the elevation uh, uh, well, I was trying, I tried gets until you hit the Poland uplands. A little further south on the border with the Czech Republic and Slovakia, you find the two main and largest mountain chains, the Sudets and the Beskids, which form the north part of the larger famous Carpathian mountain chain. Here you can also find the tallest peak, Mount Rysy, right on the border of Slovakia. All right! This will be, um, ah, yes, um, I was wondering, um, and that's just about done. Ah, okay, um, I think maybe I have to, um, make the volume a bit more quiet when I eat, um, I eat here some cookies. Um, so, yeah, but let's continue, um, I have a few more minutes. It. Now I need my triple shot of espresso break, and this time, Art is gonna come in to finish off the physical geography section. What do you want me to say, Barbie? The next thing on the teleprompter. Now, as you can see, by this point, Poland has a lot more than just flat plains and lakes. They even have moving sand dunes in the north, and a small desert in Boindouf, which literally translates to mistakes. Yeah, Poland, deserts, you'd never think those two would go together, right? No, probably not. Uh, the same goes for, for, for Russia, they also in the Russia video, they, um, Mentioned there were some desert-like areas um, to the Caucasus in the south and um, the rest um, over the Caspian Sea, which was also um, was a bit mind blowing. Poland and um, deserts. <laughs> oh, and there's also a crooked forest made up of trees that bend at a 90 degree angle. Many people have theories as to how it got that way. Some say it's natural, some say it was a dude trying to make chairs. In any case, Poland is a major producer of apples, six in the world, as well as being the world's largest treacle. Treacle? What the heck is. You know, <laughs> it's bothering me. I mean, I really. I don't want to um, insult anyone. I don't intend to insult anyone, um, I don't want that anyone feels upset. Uh, I just want, uh, um, I just wished, um, after maybe um, after the um, fall of the Soviet Union, after 1990, there would be, um, there would have been a more um, connected Europe, where, um, I mean, uh, uh, kind of, um, my dream is that uh, all of the countries in Europe and Asia, maybe in the, in the world, uh, and uh, at the end of the day, um, um, I just one gigantic big country without any borders, without any, um, of course without any wars. But um, for Europe and um, Russia, um, after World War Two, um, and after the fall of the Soviet Union, after the Warsaw Pact um, was um, not any uh, anymore existing, that for also NATO. Um, would have stopped existing and then we, there could have been, if at all uh, wanted by the European countries, uh, a, n a new European defense um, treaty um, uh, in where Russia is included. Um, I mean, what is, um, and then we would, would also not need any more a North Atlantic um, a trade organization, NATO. Um, we would just create a European trade organization maybe with Russia included and without the United States because the United States is not in Europe. So we would have uh, maybe a central European state at some point. I still want to have a um, European state where all the members of the European Union are included. Um, maybe it's in some ways similar to the United States, um, maybe in, in, man in many ways or not because many things about the United States are messed up and I don't um, think we should have this. But um, then you could, um, but then uh, of course um, things would, uh, one of the things I also don't like about Poland um, is the fact that they, mm, like Hungary or so, th they um, recently at least uh, with, a, um, with some laws, um, with that Euro I mean the European law is above national law, it's something um, all of the countries in the European Union agreed on, agreed about. 
and we should not any we should not continue to um part even more the the european idea that the uh, um countries don't um act against each other anymore that they like in the uh, middle age and the centuries um after where there has been a lot of wars and trouble we a, a united europe you know a united european um federation or union or state or whatever you want to call it that doesn't matter mm. where people from greece can um live and retire in in germany and um from l people from portugal can go to estland or so i don't know um, all of the countries together now also with, uh, with the united kingdom of course they now left but in my heart they are still a part of the european union and the euro and europe and this euro and this um, dream of a european state they are a part of it and that everyone cares about each other, each other, and um, but during the Greece cr crisis, um, where the uh, people in Greece had trouble to um, a financial crisis, um, and everything was shitty down there. They could not um, um, get any money from the ATMs, and so uh, um, there has been uh, rich guy, rich people living in the. Um, gigantic apartments and um, they were forced to buy uh, stupid submarines wh wh what the fuck um, this dream of this uh, united europe that's something we should all work forward and that's my that's yeah and and russia could be a part of this um, i mean i don't know if i'm a part of this um, european union or this european central state which i mean at some point um, it would be a European Eurasian state, <laughs> which I would have no problem with. So don't misunderstand me. But um, but the most of the people in Russia live in the Europe, so they are. It's mostly a European country. It's also mostly um, interpreted as a European country. So they, of course, would have been a part of it, and they could have been a part of it. And now, now it's of course is a, a million times difficult more because since uh, 1990 uh, we have. Um, divided even even more but yeah i just uh, hope for the future and um wish some things would have been different in the past <laughs> it's I, I have just watched six minutes and the video is already half an hour long so i will stop now and record later and um, i have to do something now um i have to um do something now um so i record later again and I copy here the video at this point Please subscribe and like the video, um, and we'll see each other again in the second part. For you it will be no different, so for you it will just go on right now. Hello and welcome back, um, uh, yes I, for you it is just a tiny second or a moment later, for me it is over two hours later. Anyway, we continue with our video, um, uh, where could we now pull it? I also um, talked a moment ago, uh, half an hour or so, um, uh, with uh, um, with someone from Poland. So, um, yeah. I also I also started uh, to learn a bit Polish um, on Duolingo a learning app. And um, yeah, I mean, yeah. Uh, I just um, started um, to learn a bit Polish here on Duolingo. One lesson. Um, it's not difficult, I would say, but it's um, something else in French and Spanish, but I already learned a bit. Anyway, we continue with the video. I hope you will enjoy it. Please like and subscribe too for um, everything of me, um, I if you want. Let's just continue. The heck is treacle and amber amber exporter? I don't even know what amber is either. What is that? Petrified tree sap? It actually is. It is. <laughs> Whoa. Today though, Poland's economy is now mainly driven by the service sector and industry, with main products like machinery and cars, buses, and video games being their largest. 
<laughs> yes, cyberpunk, huh? Just export. Anyway, Poland also has quite a few endemic animal species like storks, Eurasian lynx, roe deer, and they have one of the largest populations of the rare European bison, which, have you guys ever had a bison burger? I mean, that's like really yeah. good. All right, don't eat those. Those are endangered. And bears. In fact, a bear once served in the Polish army, and there's a statue dedicated to him. Look it up. Gold old Wojtek. Anyway, time to finish up with food. Some of the top Polish dishes, you guys, the Polish geography peeps. Geography? That's what I call them, Art. Suggested we mention include things like bigosh, cabbage rolls, galanka pork knuckle, roasted duck served with honey and apples. So many soups like these. But the national dish being sour rye soup. And of course, the most popular dishes many people have heard of. Pierogi, kielbasa, kavanos, and Krakow style sausage. And bagels. Yes, bagels originated from Poland, from the Polish Jews. Not New York. But they did move to New York. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and of course, you cannot talk about Poland without mentioning vodka. Some say it was invented in Poland. Some say the Polish just make really good vodka. But either way, vodka usually takes up a huge section in most Polish grocery stores. I've seen this guy in vodka. <laughs> no, no, you haven't. That was not pure whiskey. And we don't talk about that here. Polish people know what they like. They're a distinct people. Speaking of which, we... And uh, just because I saw it a second ago here... Um, on the flag, um, of course, it you know upside down um, Indonesia or Indonesia is uh, um, upside down Polish. Uh, it's funny. Um, I'm not sure about if the red and the white. I mean, the red white should be the same, but if the red is the same type of red, but yeah, similar flags. We now move on to um, 38 million people live in Poland. I think 38, uh, maybe 39. Thank you, Art. Thanks. Can I do like one of those special effect outros, like, you yeah. know, Wolverine theme? Can I have the claws sure. or something like that? Sure, yeah, go for it. Here. Okay. Ah! Is it true if I kill you, I become you? Let's find out. <laughs> oh, it does work. Now, some of you guys have told me in Poland, there's kind of like a word that's. <laughs> I don't know about this kind of um, transformation. I've never heard of it. Maybe it is a reference to a video game also, or movie sums up the Polish mindset. Zawatwicz. It means something Zawatwicz. along the lines of accomplishing Zawatwicz. tasks and taking care of business. Half of everybody in Europe has probably at one point at least encountered a Pole. They're everywhere. Working. Polish doctors in Germany. Polish contract workers in London. Polish bus drivers in Iceland. Work is in their blood and it's a huge part of who they are. The population is about 40 million. However, keep in mind diaspora-wise, there are about 20 million Poles living abroad and they are the second largest Slavic group after Russians. The country is incredibly homogenous with about 96% of the population claiming to be Polish, which is part of the Slavic family group. This makeup is mostly due to the Nazi intervention of World War II and Soviet relocation policies of the 20th century that drastically changed the previously diverse population. The country has few minority groups, however, of the minorities, the largest groups would be the Silesian at about 1.3% and the Kashubians at just under 1%. The rest is mostly made up of other Europeans like Ukrainians, Belarusians, Czechs, and non-Europeans. They use the Polish Zloty as their currency, they use the type Zloty? Zloty is their currency? I'm not sure. Uh, I, he said it just ago, but um... I'm not sure if I pronounce it correctly. <laughs> C, E, and F plug outlets, and they drive on the right side of the road. Now, of course, the main language of Poland is, of course, Polish. Lots of people say Polish is, like, really hard to learn. For one, they have seven cases of speech and... It's, it's, I have seen this under the E is this um, little thing. It um, looks similar to in, in French, the word is under the C in Francais. Um, but, um, yeah. I have still to learn a bit more. Um, maybe I will make a second video at some point where I, where I show you if I learned something, what I learned. Too many continents that are smashed all together at once. Geography Pavel says the Polish language is basically just spoken Wi-Fi passwords. Here's Conrad with a Polish tongue twister. Sometimes even the Polish people say they have to polish up on their Polish. <laughs> Otherwise, Poland is kind of a sociological anomaly. Even though they are Slavic, it's kind of like the easternmost extent of Latin influence, which explains why the majority at around 86% identify as either Catholic or, in the very least, nominally Catholic, varying degrees of devotion. Catholicism plays a huge role in Polish culture. They even have a channel dedicated to the Pope on TV. Politically, Poland is usually a more conservative nation that holds to its roots, and even though they're part of the EU, they usually do not let anyone tell them how they should run things in their own country. It's their home, their rules. It's, it's, it's one of the things uh, I mentioned maybe before, with um, European laws, which is above um, 
ähm, Polnisch Law, ähm, German Law, French Law, ähm, British Law, wenn sie so, in, in, in European Union so. Ähm, European Law is above country law. And yeah, also Hungary ähm, thinks this way that country law is above European law. This uh, is one of the things um, where I um, would criticize also the current Polish government, which has nothing to do with my um, that I am in favor of um, repaying the debts because you need to repay debts. That's um, just something what you have to do and. Um, I think the the, Pol the, Pol the Poland has the right to get this money and should get this money and I, as I said, also would like to pay also more money in taxes also for this goal. It's like, all right, so it's settled. Uh, what do you think of this proposal for the union, guys? I hate it. Now, Poland, <laughs> you're a key player. We need you to like this. I still hate it. <sighs> come on, Poland, <laughs> don't be stubborn. Oh, really, Germany? You want to come back to Poland again and tell us how to do things? No. I mean, in this case, uh, okay, um, I'm not sure uh, what he is referencing to, but when it is above, um, just... He he doesn't need to like like anything. He just need to give an opinion. And I mean, in the in the council, European council, that they um need to um. They need they need all of the votes of the different countries. And if they don't have the votes, then the law cannot um come. That that's that's that's, that's uh, as it is. It's democracy. So, um, you have um also inside of Germany more conservative people, more liberal people. So. It, 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 it's okay. And the, and the European Union, uh, when it um, started, was, I think, also more into uh, preventing future wars from taking place than um, creating a European Central State, which I would like to have. Um, but yeah, that's something else. Let's see. Around here, do you remember what happened last time? Oh my. Are you really going to play this card again? I always will. A little exaggerated, but yeah, don't push the Polish. They've gone through tons of that. I mean, literally, like a fifth of their population died during World War II, the majority of whom were Polish Jews. Often in tight-knit Yiddish-speaking communities, Poland- That's, that's also, I mean, I made a reaction video to the fallen of World War II, and you can also see that um, Poland has uh, had the highest um, percentage of people who died in World War II. So it just, and um, the civilians combined, the highest amount of people who died from a percentage viewpoint from the population. Um seventeen percent or so. I'm not I'm not sure, maybe it's a wrong number, but the highest number um percentage was had one of the highest populations of Jews prior to World War II and at one point up to 10%. They played a huge historical role in what Poland was and would be. Poles are proud that they were the only European occupied country to never collaborate with the Nazis. They never officially surrendered and all those years the Nazis were there, the underground army kept fighting. Poles have an incredibly complex history. I mean, they had a weird electoral monarchy thing. Conrad, explain. So the royal elections of the Polish Lithuanian Commonwealth became a thing after the death of the last Igelonian on the Polish throne. And at his death, it was the Decided that there would not be a royal dynasty that would just continue from generation to generation. That is to say that they would elect a king from a royal dynasty in Europe, but after his death they would once again elect another monarch instead of letting his children take over the Polish throne. Thank you, Conrad. Taking all that heavy stuff in, Polish people have told me there's always kind of like this sense of somber, stoic, suspicious, cynical, yet productive and prudent mentality that encapsulates the Polish. It's a weird paradox when you see them because it's like... Ugh, being Polish is the worst, seriously. I know, right? I hate Polish sausages, they're so gross. They are, and the government is just totally whack. Yeah, yeah. Poland is terrible. What did you f***ing say? You can't uh, say that, you're not from... Yeah, um, uh, um, uh, when Poland, Polish, um, when Polish people speak with each other, okay. I mean, I think it's uh, everywhere the same. I mean, also, Ger I mean, I would not uh, come so easily to defend Germany, probably. But mm, when I imagine just um, random people in Germany talk with each other um, about politics, they probably also say it's all shitty and things are not good and blah 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 and um, but if someone else comes and says the same thing or an um, American um, or 
whatever, someone, someone else, um, maybe they would also, um, take this with, uh, you know, yeah, of, you, of course you say, um, I mean, mm, the same, the same race as, um, but I understand this, I understand this, um, I would probably not come to German's defense if someone would criticize Germany. There are, are a lot of shitty things about this country. Mm, I live in. Some good, many bad. Um, I would say as, m as most countries, uh, it's uh, with the most countries similar that there are some good things, many b bad things. Mm. But, uh, yeah, I understand, it's, it's funny. <laughs> Yeah. Well, that took a little longer than expected, so uh, here's Hannah with culture stuff. Good to be back. Polish people have gone through a lot. They were pretty much fought for and invaded over 40 times for about 400 years. Nonetheless, the Polish people held through those centuries and retained their sense of identity. For one, in Poland, it is actually just as popular, if not maybe even more, to celebrate one's name day as well as your birthday. Poland has quite a high level of tertiary educated individuals with about 80% of the... But, uh, I mean, has every name in a, um, a day or just um, Christian Catholic names from the Bible? Because, I mean, everywhere, everywhere you can buy kind of cups with a name or at tourist um, stores or so in other countries also. There are al always just certain names which are available on the cups, on the other things. Um, but, uh, I mean, uh, probably the names from the Bible or so. so um, uh, so, are there only name days for those names, or are there also names for name days for all of the other names in the world? Or most popular, for example, most of popular Arabic names too. Or names from Asia or um, uh, Africa. Also, I mean, it, it would make sense when also these kind of names would be there to celebrate, and not just um, Christian names. But, yeah, tell me in the comments um, when you have any um, knowledge about this. Young adult population having enrolled in university. Also, side note, the 35% of Polish people living abroad are referred to as Polonia. There's a contest where we figure out who is the strongest man in the world, and Poland has won the most of those contests. Then, we have the Silesian and Kashubian minority. And where are those um, people um, which are Polish, um, portion, which have Polish... Polish and um, citizenship but live not in Poland. Where do they live the most of them? Maybe they will still tell us but or you tell me in the comments. Let's let Conrad explain this one because you know, it's a little complex. The Silesians who live for the most part today in Upper Silesia are an ethnographic group with a distinctive dialect of Polish. Internationally though, it's considered not as a nation or people, though some within the region consider themselves as a nation, which the Kashubians are, and they are considered as a and, West and what is this guy who is here um, talking? Um, I mean, is, is it a kind of a military head or is it just something else? I'm not sure. Uh, I'm not, I don't know. Slavic people separate from the Polish people. They are loyal towards Poland, but they have their own uh, recognized uh, minority status, they have their own traditions, they have their own cuisine, and they have their own language. There are even bilingual signs, which um, Paul will definitely put in now. Thank you, Conrad. They've also racked up quite a few Nobel Peace Prizes at 17. They are front runners of innovations and inventions like kerosene and the kerosene lamp, the oil well, the bulletproof vest, and the modern drug test. A lot of festivals can be found year round throughout the country and in different regions. Popular ones include All Saints Day, May Day, the La Cognac Festival in Krakow, and during Christmas you might see the creepy Turon everywhere. To expound a bit more on Polish music and arts, here you know, just keep, or whatever. Yeah! Music in Poland goes way back to its ancient Slavic roots. Instruments typically used include things like the wood horn, the hurdy-gurdy, the horse hair drum, the pedal accordion, and the suka. What you call me? Even though he had spent most of his time in France, sh accordion and the suka. What you call me? Even though he had spent most of his time in France, Chopin was born in Poland. His homeland was always one of the central themes to his often somber and melancholy masterpieces cherished worldwide. During the Polish National Revival, this dude, this way, 
this dude collected varieties of folk music for broadcast, including the most famous ones, these which are still performed to this day. I know that uh, there's this guitar player named uh, Jakob Zichetsky, and he is amazing. Thank you, Keith. Whoop. And now the most complicated part, history. In the quickest way I can condense it, Slavic tribes and states in the Vistula Basin, Piast Dynasty, Greater Poland, Christianity and tribal unification, Pomerania is annexed, this dude becomes the first king, feudal disintegration, Mongols invade, Czechs invade, Teutonic Knights invade, Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth, Swedes invade, Prussians invade, end of the Commonwealth, Constitution written, Napoleonic Wars, Kingdom of Poland and Free State of Krakow, Russian partitions and Russian Poland, World War I, Polish-Soviet War, independence from Russia, Germany invades, World War II begins, Communism years, independence, weird West Germany stuff, some other interesting things, like they got a Pope and a Nobel Peace Prize, first fully free elections, they joined NATO and the EU, and here we are today! Some people you guys, the Polish geography suggested we mention in this episode include, all those dukes and kings, pretty much any hero that fought with the winged hussars, Copernicus, although he was technically German, Marie Curie was actually Polish, Mikołaj Rai, Pope John Paul II, all these athletes, these directors, all these artists and musicians, the dude from the movie The Pianist was a real guy, these these American revolutionaries, and speaking of Americans, John Krasinski, Kristen Bell, Steve Carell, and Roman Polanski are also part Polish, Apple co-founder Steve Wozniak, and finally, of course, Dragos Brenczykiewicz. And there's a lot more I could have mentioned, but that would take way too long. There's a lot of famous Poles all over the world. They've left their global mark. And speaking of global marks, that um, I have to say something about um, Poland joining NATO. This was um, not a good thing. Of course. Um, in my opinion, as ever as an East country from Germany, because in the 2 plus 4 contract, um, to my knowledge and um, to what I have, I would know, um, there was a um, not written down um, statement, but uh, someone said it in the dis in the discussions in the that um, I mean Russia um, uh, Gorbachev. Um, said yes to the 2 plus 4 contract, agreed to, um, that um, Germany can be united under the condition mm, that NATO would not expand east. It was not in the written down in the contract, it was just said that um, he, he got this promise that um, NATO would not expand east um, after um, Germany um, jo reunification and also Germany joining NATO. So, anyway, but that's something else that um, I, I, I also told you, I think I told you, when I'm not correct, when I'm not mistaken, I mean, that I think NATO should have been resolved and stopped existing after the reunification of uh, Germany. I can already um, uh, hear the people typing something in the comments, it's okay, do this, we can have a discussion, just say politely. Um, I'm also polite. And yeah, I wanted to say this, so um, let's continue. That brings us to. As a central player in Europe for a long, complicated history, it's no surprise Poland has picked up quite an entourage over many, many years of Polish existence. For one, as part of the Visegrad group, the Czechs and Slovaks are generally considered the close West Slavic brothers. They've had very few wars and conflicts with them. They understand their languages, kind of. However, they both kind of think the other sounds funny when they talk. For Russians, it's more of like a people versus government thing. As people, Poles and Russians get along quite well on a human level. It's just the governments that often disagree and clash. Poland for a while was under the Iron Curtain and Warsaw Pact, which complicated things even more. But as crazy as things get, there is always kind of like this universal Slavic understanding, which is why Ukraine comes in as a pretty close friend. Ukrainians love to come to Poland for work. There is also a fast growing Ukrainian community and they kind of share a similar post-communist struggle alliance, although they still kind of don't like how Ukrainians honor the UPA, which is a whole other story. Poland is kind of like Germany's biggest regret that they have to constantly be reminded of literally every day as they are neighbors, but they are the largest economic partner for them as well. Germany does have many bilateral relations with Poland. It's the 21st century, people have grown up and moved on, and the future looks bright mostly between the two. Quick note, Lithuania is like the divorced wife that they remember having some of the best years of their history with. Today when a Pole meets a Lithuanian, they just kind of nod and smile, understanding everything the other is thinking without a single word. Their best friend, however, every Pole has told me the same thing, 
Hungary. Historically, they've shared some of the same monarchs, heroes. They've always helped each other in times of need. There are many parks and monuments commemorating the friendship between the two. There's even a saying in Polish, two brothers, both to the saber and the bottle. In conclusion, let's give this to Conrad. Conrad, what do you have to say? Poland is a country that has a lot to offer, both geographically and has been through pretty much everything historically. It's been an empire, it's been completely erased from the map, and today Poland is a growing and thriving country. I'm sure that the role of Poland on the European scene will only grow. Thank you, Conrad, and thank you, Art, for being in this episode. Stay tuned. Portugal is coming up next, guys. Um, I would love to visit Poland at some point. Maybe I will. I am free to travel uh, thanks to the European Union, which I appreciate. I just wish that um, I... Uh, I, I thought about this a while, how to say this, what I want to say next. Uh, I, I said it, I mentioned it, I think, already um, a bit, but I want to um, make it again clear that um, at first I don't want to insult anyone, but that should be hopefully obvious. And hopefully no one feels um, uh, um, insulted from you Polish people or from other places in the world. But I speak now to the Polish people directly. I don't want to insult you. I like your language, some of your culture maybe. Mm. I know the second thing I wanted to say. I want a united Europe. A big united Europe. Where every country which exists in Europe, and later maybe even every country which ex exists in the world, um, gets along perfectly with each other. Um, for Europe, I even... I, I, we have we have all a long history together. Um, over the last thousands, hundreds of years, uh, definitive. Um, and there, were, there have been a lot of wars, different um, terrible wars. But in this uh, century, uh, since 2002, I think where the when the European Union was created, it was a kind of a new begin new beginning for this co continent. And during the time of the European Union, there had been a long a lot of um, also crisis like 2009 with Greece also. And but I w just wish that in s when such crisis appear, you would be more. Um, we would not be uh, so much against each other and um, try to harm someone else or um, abuse someone else. Like I have the feeling Germany did with Greece. Or maybe even with um, uh, with, with um, Italy and um, Portugal or Spain or so. Um, I'm not sure, but definitely with Greece. And of course there should not be, be any war. And also Ukraine is um, on the European continent, at least. Um, and the same goes for Russia. A, a big majority of the Russian population live uh, on the European continent. And um, if you just take the European Russia, there are the most people, that, I mean, this European Russia, when you consider this just for um, like a mind experiment to be your own country, then this country would have the highest population and uh, would be also the largest in Europe. But of course we can't split Russia. I mean, all of Russia belongs to Europe for me. So it's the same way as Great, Great Britain. They left the European Union, okay, but in my heart they are part of the European Union. And I want a peaceful Union. After after the after the um, after the end of the Soviet Union and um, the end of the Warsaw Pact, also NATO should have been stopped existing, resolving. I'm not sure what to name, um, how how to say it in English. But um, it should stop existing at that point of time. We should have created then, at that point of time, a European um, organization, m maybe a European uh, um, defense organization or something like this with Russia included and then which could have um, overcome prejudices and um, also, also by the way if people now um, say 
Um, uh, what, what Russia is doing right now is terrible, what is true. Um, and therefore, also communism is um, terrible. That's of course <laughs> more than just a bit weird and stupid because Russia is not communistic. Neither socialistic. Also, the Soviet Union was probably not communistic nor socialistic. But they claimed it at least. Russia is not claiming this. Um, so, it uh, it is not uh, bound um, to... Um, yeah, it's not um, connected um, without any... I mean, uh, communism is a system of... Um, a so um, society. It's a, syst a system for society. So, and... Um, Capitalism is a um, system of economy, and also a bit of society maybe. But um, you cannot just say because the Soviet Union was maybe communistic, um, well, um, and terrible things happened in the communism maybe, or uh, people died. That therefore communism is also bad, because it was probably not even communism, communism, communistic anyway. But yeah. I want a peaceful European Union and uh, maybe even European Central State. Maybe you don't uh, disagree with me, that's totally fine. Mm. When you want to write something in the comments, uh, when you watched it so far until now, and still watch it, um, write your opinion in the comments. I'm curious. I'm not sure when I can upload this video. It will take a while to um, render and so, but I will do it as soon as it's ready. Maybe tonight, maybe after midnight, maybe in the morning or so, I don't know. But um, I, ho I hope you enjoyed it. Please like and subscribe. Follow and um, follow me on Twitch if you want to see me and um, play video games. I play Marvel at the moment. Um, I also m make on YouTube um, um, let's play a uh, let's play f about um, uh, um, which has three white hand. Um, and yeah, I will. Also I'll I'm currently learning Polish. I will uh, c continue to learn a bit. Mm. I hope you enjoyed it. See you next time.